Okay, I would say let's kick it off. So hello and welcome to this Lina X webinar uh, together with ZF. Our today's topic is how EAM supported post-merger integrations at ZF. So yeah, my name is Christian Hermann. I'm a customer success manager at Lina X, doing this job now for more or less two and a half years. And our today's guest is Kai Elsner, who's an enterprise architect at ZF Friedrichshafen AG. So welcome, Kai. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for having me here. And also a warm welcome from my side. Um, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share some content with you. Um, so today's uh, topic is uh, enterprise architecture supported post merger integrations at ZF Group. Um, my name is Kai Elsner. I'm with ZF since 2015 and we are using Linux since a little bit more than one year, January 2020. Before we start with the topic, I would like to share some key figures with, that, with uh, you. Who are we? Who is ZF um, for the ones that don't know us? And um, as the uh, 2020 figures will be published as of next week, I'm still publishing here the 2019 figures. In 2019, we achieved sales of 36.5 billion euros with around about 150,000 employees. Um, we do have a global presence uh, with 241 locations, even before the merger with Wapco and uh, around about 160 uh, production locations worldwide. ZF's mission is uh, zero accidents and zero emissions. And um, how are we going to achieve that with all our different technology domains? like the vehicle motion control, the integrated safety, the automated driving and the electric mobility, all supported by IoT uh, solutions and also digital products. And so where do you find our products? It's not just in passenger cars and trucks. It's also in every other machine that moves. My, my favorite product is here the the wind uh, power generator. Um, so it's really unbelievable. You have on top of this uh, wind turbine, um, a 25 tons gearbox uh, from ZF uh, and also uh, an IoT enabled predictive maintenance solution. So I can, can still not believe that you can put 25 tons on top of this wind turbine, but it works. <laughs> So now coming to the merger situation. Uh, last year, ZF bought Wapco, um, and this is the perfect match for us because together we will now mobilize the commercial vehicle intelligence. Um, so this is a golden opportunity to step up in the um, commercial vehicle area for ZF. So we are currently busy with the integration and uh, Wapco is going to be integrated, uh, or that has already happened as a division CVCS, commercial vehicle control systems. And with that integration, we bring another 27 manufacturing locations and another 14,000 employees into the company. And uh, yeah, that was also something that required enterprise architecture support. So what was the initial situation when enterprise architecture team joined the integration project? So um, we joined after the due diligence, um, the post-merger integration had already started. And um, then the board of management uh, where the integration project reported to, they came back with a question, um, so how far is that all aligned with um, existing applica target application plans in ZF before the merger? So what is going to change here? They wanted to get that, that clarified. Um, and that turned out to end up on our end in enterprise architecture team to check against existing plans. So we joined the project. Uh, the integration project was called Verona project. And uh, the Verona project had a planning approach. They were organized in work streams. Um, they were identifying the leading systems or applications. Um, they were working per work stream towards some targets and business, uh, uh, some business targets and uh, sub targets per work stream, all defined by the business. 
So these were their planning approaches. They were thinking in work stream business targets or sub targets and talking about IT systems or applications. And um, we from enterprise architecture side, we always come with uh, business capabilities and application thinking and to, to also check against existing plans. We, we need clar clarity on that topic. So we had a little bit the challenge to somehow um, come to common terminology and come to common level of detail. Um, so you can imagine that the applications identified here for the work streams were on a little bit different level of detail. So in some work streams, they have simply put SAP as a key application in there. So that is what I mean with, we need to come to common level of detail across all work streams and also to have uh, the possibility to check against existing plans. What was the situation on the enterprise architecture toolbox side? So what was in place here when we joined the project last year? Um, Linux was pretty new for us. Uh, we, in, we started in, in the, this project here in March. Linux was implemented in January. It was pretty empty at that time. Um, business capabilities were already in the tool. Um, all moved from PowerPoint into the tool. Uh, at that time, we had zero users outside the uh, central enterprise architecture team trained and onboarded to Linux. Um, the target application landscape documentation was still in PowerPoint and Excel. Here you can see just an empty Excel as an example. And um, the SIS application landscape was also sitting in Excel and SharePoint lists. And and the previous enterprise architecture tool uh, with a little bit of outdated information. So uh, information spread across different uh, tools. What was then the idea how to, how to proceed and how to support the project? So we had the need to combine our planning frameworks to come to common understanding and common terminology. So the project team, the project integration project team, they were thinking about work streams, as I said, and we had the need to come to capability views. So we somehow had to identify the relevant capabilities. Here you can see a screenshot of our business capability map level one and two. We also had a little bit the challenge to identify the right applications. So we had plans uh, at that time in PowerPoint and Excel uh, talking about the to be application landscape where we are heading to, um, which was a little bit on a different level of detail than what uh, the project team had in their, in their PowerPoint documentation here. So that was all our, our challenge. And um, we immediately decided to go tool-based. Even if Lina X was pretty, pretty new at that time for us, um, we thought that this is a golden opportunity to use it right away, uh, even if also we as an enterprise architecture team were not totally uh, familiar with it. it, was also new for us. So we wanted to go tool-based and um, we were already in the situation that um, we had defined some approaches that we always go from a reporting perspective first. So whenever we put data into Linux, we always ask ourselves, what is the report that is required here, which then drives the question, what is the data that is required for the report? So we went back to the integration project team and uh, were talking to them about reports to uh, align on reporting needs for them and also on reporting needs for us because we were asked to check something and that to check against existing plans. So for that, we also needed some reports. So uh, the first important report for us, as well as for the integration project team is the business capability map, uh, which is now easy to see for everyone. And um, so we have clarity on that and can share that easily a tool based across the whole team, across the whole company. Another key report also standard report is was for us the application landscape report that we as a team in enterprise architecture, as well as the project team gets clarity on which application is assigned to which business capability and supporting which business capability. Um, then the other uh, very uh, important report was the application metrics report, which is a very flexible one. And here that gave us a little bit uh, more possibilities. So we agreed with the project team that having reports 
where you can show business capabilities on this axis, uh, user groups, and here on a very high level, which one is a ZF application, which one is a division CVCS, formerly Wabco application, and then having all the applications here in the center. So this kind of report would be very helpful, A, for us as enterprise architecture team, but also helpful for the project team going away from Excel Power and PowerPoint into tool-based reporting. And finally, by having application matrix report, which is flexible and can be adjusted, we also agreed with the project team to offer a report that the project team can still proceed thinking and organizing themselves in their work streams and in their business targets. So we put on this axis here the work stream structure like sales and, and then the different uh, business targets. On the other axis here, the um, business capabilities in the center, then all the applications so that you as a project team can send, send see, okay, here are my applications supporting this business target uh, in the project scope and uh, also these business capabilities. And um, yeah, by presenting that from a reporting perspective first back to the project team um, that enabled at, at least, um, yeah, better understanding on their side why they should pull, put, all, put all the data into the tool. Before we jump into onto the next steps that how we have done that, I need to share our high level Linux data model with you. So for the ones uh, that are also Linux customers, it's easy to understand, I guess. Um, but there's still one additional fact sheet type we have added to our Linux workspace. It's called the context fact sheet here on the right hand side. This is a little bit the dirty fact sheet because you can assign every other fact sheet to that context fact sheet. Um, we have that in place to create some department and domain specific or even project specific um, views. And in this project, in the integration uh, phase, we have used that to build the integration project structure with the work streams and the business targets. Uh, we have done this as a context, modeled this as a context, and then assigned the relevant applications to that context. So that is a little bit an adjusted Linux data model on our side. So um, then we went back to the different project work streams and have asked them to do following activities. First of all, please identify all relevant business capabilities uh, that are in scope here for the integration for your work stream. And luckily the project was organized in a four in a box approach. We had always four people heading each work stream. Um, two IT people, one from the Wabco side, one from, from the ZF side, uh, and also two business persons, one from the Wabco side and another one from the ZF side. So we were really able to come here to common understanding and also identify the right needs. So project structure was already well-defined. Um, then we have asked them to tag the business capabilities with the project Verona tag, then categorize these business capabilities against our standardization and integration style. What is, what is that? Um, so that is how, what is the target operating model for ZF in this business capability? That is something we figure out with the business guys, with the business leads. So how independent may a plant in a specific country uh, work in this specific um, business capability or how harmonized or even unified do we have to be in this capability by having common understanding on, on that target operating model for a specific business capability, you can better align than the number of applications and the single uh, thing, uh, also the, the possibility to look into harmonized data. Then we have asked the guys um, to create the ZF applications in the inventory. At that point in time, as I said before, we had zero applications in the tool. We have started from scratch and just used the integration project here. So please put it in and tag it with project Verona tag and also um, ZF owned application tag. 
for the Vapco applications, we were lucky, lucky because uh, Vapco was a Linux customer before the merger. We have now merged into a single Linux instance, but it was quite easy to get the data out of the Vapco Linux instance into the ZF Linux instance. So these applications were already there, and um, the relevant applications were then also tagged um, with the project Verona tag. Um, then we have asked our colleagues to map uh, the applications to the relevant business capabilities and finally map the applications to this special context fact sheet type to their work stream and their business target to enable then the matrix reports I initially showed. And finally, please double check, identify gaps. Have you been able to assign an application to all identified capabilities? Have you also been able to um, um, assign, uh, to use all applications uh, that were formally mentioned in the PowerPoint-based planning? Just double check that we haven't forgotten anything. Um, and yeah, how was that done? I mean. Um, that was very, very spe special and very um, depending on the different work streams. So some work streams uh, were quite, uh, uh, were, were very easily able to do that on their own just after uh, uh, one hour's Linux X onboarding sessions. Um, other work streams really needed hands-on support from our team. So depending on the different work streams and how they were able to do it, um, I really supported them also hands-on and were also part of their meetings with, within their work stream. But finally, um, in a very short time, we, because we were a little bit under time pressure, we got all the information and then also asked our colleagues to proceed with more details, fill in application lifecycle, fill in the strategic classification, and uh, if that is an application that is where we already know that it's going to be replaced, please also fill in the successor. And um, what was then after having now all these data points, um, what was now the final result uh, that we could then use? So finally, we had all required data points to do our enterprise architecture check because we, we now can look at it from a business capabilities perspective. And we can, because we have now that, we can also go back and check against existing architecture, target architecture plans. So um, how was that done? Here you can see we have used the inventory again, then filtered for uh, some context information for some specific work streams. And for each and every work streams, we have then created these safe searches and discussed it in, in meetings with the team. Um, so here, for example, the first application, the project team has already classified that as to be replaced. We from enterprise architecture team looking into our existing plans also uh, would have flagged that as red, um, cannot be part of target. So here we are aligned. And the next one, the project team is saying this is, a, or the application owner is saying this is a strategic application. Um, we as an enterprise architecture team are saying this is yellow from our perspective and yellow means is candidate for target but needs further clarification. Here we have to discuss. Uh, and in this case, we have to discuss because this is an um, uh, old um, 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 SAP ERP application and the target application should be an S4HANA application. So depending on the timeline, when this is going to happen, when this is going to be rolled out to, uh, to the Wapco side, um, we have to accept the fact that it's still a sub ERP or can, can wait for the S4HANA. So that's why it's yellow. Um, so by having all these applications and assignments to business capabilities, we were able to do this check per application and then report back and have a basis for the discussion. Um, and um, here are the other reports. So we, as I said, we have used also the application matrix reports and that was quite helpful for the project to A, get also detailed feedback on the enterprise architecture check. Uh, what are the red, the yellow and the green applications from our perspective? Uh, which application is owned by whom? Uh, what is, which one is coming from the ZF side? Which one is coming from the CVCS side? 
here, yes, everything from the CVCS side is red, but that was not the case everywhere. Um, so in some areas, we really had to dive deeper and understand which one to retain and which one to retire. Um, another benefit of having everything in the tool now is, yeah, you can now easily switch to different views and by uh, like the strategic classification. So every work stream on the post-merger integration project can create now work stream specific reports and uh, always see his latest and greatest application landscape assigned to business capabilities with the strategic classification, which one is going to be replaced, which one is the strategic one, which one is coming from the CVCS side, formerly Vapco, and which one is coming from the rest of ZDF. And also quite helpful, um, we now have a pretty good overall application landscape report where we can easily filter on uh, the dark blue and the light blue, uh, which one is coming from formerly Vapco, now CVCS, which one comes coming from ZF. Um, from an overall perspective, not just from a work stream perspective. And interestingly, that triggered a huge uh, discussion or triggered awareness, let's say, no, not discussion, triggered a much better awareness of the interdependencies between the different MA project work streams. Um, in the beginning of the whole journey, everyone was looking in his work stream, looking at, at, at his playground. But by putting it into the tool and reporting it out of the tool, you immediately see the dependencies, which application is supporting various business capabilities across various business areas, where you cannot do a retain, retire decision for your work stream only. So that was also quite helpful by having the information in the tool. So um, this is what I wanted to share with you. Um, are there already questions in the Q&A sections or would you like to raise questions? Uh, please feel free, feel, feel free to answer questions now. Feel free to answer questions later. I will share my contact details. Um, and um, I'm also happy to learn from your side how you approach M&A and, &A and uh, how you do that tool based and how you have used Lina X. So I'm happy for everyone who would like to share also with me his journey and his learnings. Yeah, Kai, first of all, thank you very much for those uh, insights. I guess this, this is like really, really interesting content that you shared here. And I guess that a lot of like prospects and customers are highly interested in like and in specifically those merger and acquisition uh, scenarios and um so there's no question yet in the in the chat on the in the in the the, the uh, section um ah, okay the first one is uh, coming in right now <laughs> um so the first question is um are you guys using hierarchies in the application fact sheets yes yes we do we uh we have level level one to level four, and as a very seldom exception, also level five applications. Yes, that is done. And uh, we always assign the lowest level application to the business capability. Perfect. Are there any further questions? And also for everyone um, here, um, you, you have the possibility uh, to, to, to just uh, like use this question and answer section um, just uh, type uh, your message and um, we will do our very best to answer it. I'm also having a look at the chat. So, um, <laughs> okay, next question is coming in. So were there any IoT related applications which dealt with issues of timing, rate, technical stack, mismatch, et cetera? Um, yeah, maybe I can split that into different <laughs> questions. A tech stack mismatch, um, starting with that one. So I have shared just the, the um, application uh, side of the uh, M&A journey with you. We do have done a similar exercise on the technology side, um, mainly in the, in the infrastructure area, starting in the workplace area. So we have also used uh, Linux and technical stacks to do a comparison between the, the two two companies that are merging, now, now a single company. And um, quickly thinking about IoT related applications. Um, not in the phase of the uh, initial phase of the, of the merger. So we have started supporting very early now in the initial phase where the 
immediate needs of the business are covered. And um, yes, there's also an IoT platform coming from the Vapco from the CVCS side, but that is for now not merging with any other IoT related topics from this from the ZF side. So that is parked for later and was not in scope right now. Uh, thank you very much <laughs> for this insight as well. Um, okay, another question is coming in. <laughs> um, so the question is, uh, are you making use of IT components? If yes, who maintains them and their relationships to apps? And also, um, is the Technopedia integration used for it? Yeah. Um, Technopedia integration not used because we are still on an older license model. We don't have a license for that, uh, number one. And number two, um, my past experience with data coming from Technopedia was, was not so good that I am willing to pay money for it. So I have to check that again. But um, my previous experience, uh, that is not a Lina X based experience, but I was aware of Technopedia already before. So I didn't have too, too good experience with that. Um, yes, we are using also IT components. Um, and there are at the moment two different ways uh, of using IT components. On the one hand, our infrastructure guys uh, from IT operations side, they are using the IT component landscape and signing IT components to technical stacks completely to manage their technology landscape. As we also manage our application landscape, they manage their technology landscape. I'm also supporting these guys. Um, there is unfortunately at the moment not too much interdependency and relationship maintained in Linux X uh, between applications and IT components. For now, these are mainly two silos helping the uh, two different uh, teams to, to manage their, their landscape. Only in some areas we can really drill down from business application to applicate uh, to from business capability to application down to IT component provider and technical stack. For some applications that is maintained, but that is uh, a lower number. That is at the moment not the standard and also not the highest pressure on us for that use case. Uh, um, maybe also like an answer given from my end, uh, from my customer experience, um, we typical start with uh, like more or less all our customers uh, like literally with the application landscape and relating applications then to the to the business side meaning to business capabilities processes and, and user groups and it components often follow then uh, like a bit later and um, as as you mentioned kai um, um, that that you uh, that you say like technopedia um, you not had like the very best experience it's also one of the reasons why we decided to also come up with like an own service for 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 this kind of mm -hmm. um, yeah like getting data uh, automatically related to to it components um for several reasons but only uh, also one main reason is if you maintain a complete service yourself um of course you, you have more freedom and and um like like probably a smoother and, and a even better kind of integration so um, also, like something, Christopher, uh, addressing you here directly. Um, if you would like to have their further uh, um, insights, um, also feel free to reach out uh, to, to me personally or uh, to Lina X uh, in general, or maybe you also already having contact. So feel free to address those questions also um, outside of this uh, webinar. Okay, next question. Um, how was a common business capability map agreed in the first instance? Was it imposed by ZF into the acquired company, uh, CBCS? Were there any new business capabilities created or added as a result of taking on board CBCS? Yes. So, um, so the whole uh, methodology working with business capabilities that was heavily used in ZF already before the merger, and it was not well known in, in former Wabco, now CBCS. So we started with our business capability map and then adding to this in the discussion with the business guys from the coming in from the Wabco, now CBCS side. Um, and um, what I can also say that, um, Taking this approach, this business capability based planning was quite helpful to start in at a certain level of detail before diving much deeper into uh, compare process level. And 
We have only done that going much deeper for the topics where we don't, we, where we cannot do an easy retain and retire decision. So in some areas, it's not so clear. And in some areas, it's very clear, very easy to decide because there was already a strategic tool, it's licensed, it's rolled out globally in ZF. So it's quite easy to decide how to, how to treat that now in the post-merger integration scenario. In other areas, it's not so easy to decide because um, uh, sometimes there is different functionality covered on the with the application on the ZF side and the application on the Wabco side. And here we really need to dive deeper oh. in, onto process level. What is missing and is that acceptable? And so after having done that exercise that I showed to you, the project team is now doing really 360 degree analysis, looking at it from all perspective, from cost perspective, from skills perspective, uh, going down to process level. But starting as business capability level was helpful. Yeah. And maybe also here, like an <laughs> additional comment from my hand, as um, like said, if it's uh, not the, the first and the only customer that I've um, yeah um, had as a customer who has done a merger and acquisition situation or where I was also kind of involved. Um, we often see that there's a, yeah, that the project team really has a look on the business capabilities from company A and company B, and that they somehow try to find an aligned business capability map and really to say like okay um maybe the naming differs and um so we can migrate like those business capabilities and the ones that the like the company who buys the others already has um usually we not really see that there's like a huge project of uh, switching the one or the other companies because typically um where we see merger and acquisition scenarios like the, the business capabilities are already quite similar, maybe a different name, maybe the one company has it a bit more detailed. Um, so it, it's usually quite easy to find like one common picture then and um, works more or less uh, like pretty smoothly, I would say. Mm -hmm. Good, um, yeah, we already have another question. <laughs> so, good, uh, good, business... that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the discussion here. Um, are the business applications running on in-house infrastructure or was cloud-based migration a part of the exercise? Yeah, that was a combination. So um, may, uh, what we mainly had is uh, in-house on-premise infrastructure, um, a lot of software as a service on both sides, um, and uh, also applications being hosted at third-party hosting providers. There were not too many applications for the current scope of the integration um, um, that are, let's say, Azure or AWS uh, uh, applications uh, relying on platform as a service offering from these providers. So it was mainly software as a service and third party hosting and on prem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, there's no further question in the pipeline right now. So um, I just uh, once again uh, use the opportunity, um, write your question into in the, into the Q&A session. Um, yeah, happy to answer further questions. Otherwise, if you might come up with follow-up question afterwards, um, feel free to reach out. Uh, and we, we are happy also to, to answer your questions offline. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it seems that there's no question anymore. So Kai, once again, thank you very much for, yeah, for sharing the presentation to answer all the questions. Um, was a very valid and, and insightful session. I uh, really, uh, really liked it a lot. Um, also, thank you everyone for joining the session. Um, I hope you um, yeah, received some great insights. And as mentioned, feel free to reach out to us. Um, feel free to contact Kai. Um, yeah, thank you everyone. And then have a great, um, yeah, depending on your time zone, great day or great evening, uh, whatsoever. Um, and everyone, please stay healthy and safe. So then I would say we close the session. Thank um, you. Thank you for having me here. Martin. And thanks for listening. And come back with any questions afterwards, if you like. <laughs> sure. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.